I think we'll start now. <laughs> yeah. My name is still Thomas, I'm, uh, but I'm now the moderator of this second panel on poetic responses to the Holocaust. And I will not say the names because it doesn't work for me <laughs> to say correctly. And we have these three great scholars up here. And I stick to the minimalist tradition that you established about just saying the name, and then you can further introduce yourself if you think it's needed. Each of the three gentlemen has at most half an hour, and if, they, if you go beyond that, I will take you down <laughs> to, to your chair. And, uh, and at the end of that, I'll try quickly to kind of try connect some of the points that has been made here to some more general themes. And, and hopefully being very brief so that there will be time also for you to ask questions. So without further ado, I welcome first uh, Christoph Sivsevsky something. Almost, Christoph, almost perfect. <laughs> welcome and we look forward to hear what you have to say. Thank you, Thomas, and thank you, Jan, for invitation. I'm not a scholar and I'm trying to learn as much as possible from my scholar friends. But till now I didn't learn to, to have a dialogue through reading papers. So I'm, I, I don't have a, a paper, but I will try to, to tell a few words about my two mentors, Czesław Miłosz and Avram Sutskever. Uh, starting with the sentence I heard on the threshold of Sutskever apartment in Tel Aviv years ago, when only he opened the door and knew that me and my wife, Małgorzata, are knocking to the door. He was saying, Czyżewscy, dlaczego oddaliście Wilno? Czyżewski is why you gave up Wilno. Wilno. And of course, you may understand it, it could sound very provocative to my Lithuanian friends, Zhigole and Mindaugas, but at the end, I will try to explain how I understand this call, which challenged us and, and which was uh, expressed by Avram Sutskever in the, precisely in the way to challenge us, not to give up. Vilna, in fact. Uh, my first uh, mentor and, and the person who, whom I met thinking about establishing Borderland Center just after communist collapse in Poland in 1989 was Czesław Miłosz. He came back for the first time after 50 years and more to this borderland of Lithuania, Belarus, Russian Kaliningrad region and Poland today. And in a small town, Seine, we established a center which is called Borderland of Arts, Cultures and Nations and as the Borderland Foundation as well. And uh, in fact, it was in the response of the Miłosz question to us, we were young avant-garde artists having our background in avant-garde Polish theater in the 70s and 80s. Why, after 1989, I'm finding you on the eastern border of Poland, not willing you know, to go to the West, to use this openness to the West as an artist. And what is the clue in that gesture you've made of coming to the borderlands? It was really... Uh, important thing to him, you know, to meet in the vanished place in Krasnogruda, which is now uh, our international center for dialogue, but for many years it was a manor house belonging to Czesław Miłosz family and then ruined during communist time. Uh, so for him, that place by the history was destined to, to uh, vanish. Why young people uh, with artistic background searching for the future activity in such borderland, uh, borderlands? 
we didn't have an answer. And, and in fact, Miłosz was the author of some of the vac vocabulary we started to use from that time. He said to us at that moment, I know what you will do. You will build connective tissue, a connective tissue on the borderlands as another challenge for us, uh, for our future uh, activities. So what I'm intended to, to say about you is about being activist on the borderlands of Central Eastern Europe, but now we work in many other borderlands in the world, after Holocaust, after totalitarianism, after uh, uh, postmodern times. Mm -hmm. And the, the main question for me, uh, to both of them, Miłosz and Sutskever, is what to do today and tomorrow. So the relationship I had this luck uh, to establish with them was very much focused on the future. So what they trying to convince me was that, you know, we were living for many decades and centuries after something, after a tragedy, after the broken bridge, after something was disconnected us. But think about living before something what comes in the future uh, or with the future and try to work on that using the experience, the memories and all what we gain as an experience in our life. So both of them were persons who were not focused very much on the past as I've met them and, and worked with them, but very much about the, the future and, and contemporary world and, and the future. It was very interesting to observe Miłosz coming back to the borderland of Poland and Lithuania. He was not obsessed with his nostalgia about the past. He was obsessed to meet young people, to meet, meet young Lithuania and to, uh, to witness the development of uh, young Lithuania and young Poland as new countries and help in that process <laughs> of, of uh, doing things in front of something what can happen in the future because of the background they both had. And that's how I read also this challenge by Avram Sutskever, why you gave up uh, uh, Vilna, uh, in fact. There is a moment in the, the in their history, Miłosz and Sutskever, uh, very special in 1972, in the train from Rotterdam to Paris, after literary festival in Rotterdam that they've met together. And I, I'm all the time I'm trying to imagine this meeting and try to explore all the senses uh, out of uh, out of that. Uh, very symbolical, uh, symbolical uh, one. Um, Miłosz is giving some notes in his uh, books about that meeting that I even don't know how to translate into English. Rozpiliśmy uh, piersiówkę, uh, which, you know, piersiówka is a bottle of vodka you keep on your heart, in fact. So when you open the bottle, it's like rozpiliśmy piersiówkę. It's like making friendship uh, through the common drinking of uh, vodka. But you, you easily can imagine what was behind them before that meeting. And uh, the Vilna, of course, Vilnius, Vilno was uh, the common city for both, uh, both of them. They belong, they are more or less the same age. Miłosz is two years older. And they both belong to young poetry groups, Miłosz to Żagary, uh, uh, Sutskever to 
Jung Wilne, uh, Jung Wilne, not from the beginning, and probably you know why he was not accepted at the beginning to be member of this uh, of this group. But that's uh, the common background uh, they have. And the question, of course, for me was, did they know each other from that time? And this question I have raised to to both of them. And Suskever remembers Miller from that time remembers exactly because he was participating in the meetings of Szegary and in the meetings of so-called uh, Literary Wednesday, Środy Literackie, as, uh, as a uh, young uh, Yiddish poet, but knowing very well uh, Polish poetry and uh, going you know, to the Battery University in Vilna for the lectures of Manfred Kribl about Cyprian Kamil Norwid, who was a favorite poet uh, of young Sutzkever. Uh, so it was for Sutzkever, it was a common milieu of literary life in, in Vilna. And this leftist group of, uh, of Zagari, uh, naturally they were much more open to other nationalities and other cultures of Vilna than and other groups, but still it was very limited. It was one famous meeting uh, they organized uh, in 5th of February 1933, which under the title The Poetry of Revolt, when they invited Yiddish, Lithuanian, Belarusian poets for the common reading at, uh, at that time. But it was not very often such things happened uh, in pre-war Vilna. And of course, as you heard from Cecilia and other, uh, and what, what Lucy Davidovich was giving the, the, the witness of that time in pre-war Poland and Vilna as well, there was no atmosphere, there was no spirit really to have more and more such kind of meetings. And in fact, Miwa should escape from Vilna very early uh, to Warsaw, being persecuted by his openness, you know, and he was, among other things, he was doing radio uh, programs, inviting, you know, Jewish uh, rabbis to the programs or the Belarusian choirs or uh, Lithuanian poets. And so he, he, he was banned from Vilna uh, in, the mid, uh, in the mid 30s, yes, at that time. But this is one of the important background for two of them, the, uh, the, the milieu of pre-war Vilna. And then the war time comes. And you know, many things were written about familiarity and even intimacy of both poets in, uh, in their writings. Um, David Roskis, for example, wrote a, a beautiful piece uh, about a poor Christian looking at the ghetto by Miłosz, and Sutzkever ghetto poems using you know, this metaphor of mall as, as a symbol of living underground you know, under these circumstances. But there are uh, many other similarities uh, between them from that period of time. And if I will, for example, quote for you the fragment of the, Mi yeah, now I'm saying Miłosz, but if I would not say the name, probably you can say that Sutzkever could write it as well. Here is a broken city. What is poetry which does not save nations and people? that I wanted good poetry without knowing it, that I discovered late its salutary aim. In this, and only this, I find salvation. It's a poem dedication written by Miłosz in his poetry collection called The Rescue of Salenie. Uh, which I, I would say is very close to what Suskever thought about the role of poetry during such dark circumstances during the war. 
time. And of course, another thing I, I could refer uh, between them uh, uh, was the very special attitude to, to, to the nature. In fact, they both share the experience of being as a, as a child in Siberia in different circumstances. Suskever was banned with his family to Omsk a district and Miłosz was a son of an engineer and bridge builder who was invited to build roads and bridges in Siberia and took his family in not far from Omsk. In fact, but their reaction to the to Siberia, which in Polish has two words, you know, you can say about the geographical uh, region Siberia, and you can say Sibir. Mm. Yeah, the 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 place for deportation and the biggest in the world prison, in fact. And uh, but they both took from Siberia uh, something what was like in uh, initiation to the world which is pre-civilization, pre-Jewish, pre-Polish, something what belongs to another world than we belong as, a, as members of nations, cultures, and all kinds of divisions between us. The very primeval uh, experience before the war and before something what um, made all this vanish from the uh, from the life. So there are different uh, backgrounds before this meeting in the train between Rotterdam and uh, and Paris. Another one is very painful disconnection, the broken bridge between a Pole and a Jew. And you remember the poem uh, Zupoyun, yes, do Polski, Sutskewer mm -hmm. wrote in uh, between July and September 1946, in the context of Kielce pogrom. Very painful poem. And you can collect all the Lucy Davidovich books about Polish antisemitism, and it would be less painful than this poem written by Sutskever, which, uh, for Polish reader, which has a very special sentence, you know, taken from uh, Juliusz Słowacki, Smutno mi Boże, God, I'm sad. But Sutskever is using Polish language in the original text to rhyme it with Yiddish language. And you see, for him, the Polish language, when, when I've met him, and I have many letters from here, uh, him written in a pure, wonderful Polish language. And, uh, but uh, there is something in Polish language from Vilnius, from Vilna, which, which has its own specificity, melody, and spirit. You can't hear it in Krakow or Warsaw. <clears throat> you can hear it only in Vilna, on the streets, and Mindauga still can hear this language in Vilnius streets today. So to, to hear Sutskever speaking in Polish, when I translated his poem, uh, the, what will remain, yes? Uh, he knew my translation before our meeting in, in Tel Aviv. And in, in a certain mo moment of our conversations, he started, uh, he said, I will read you a poem in Polish. What means for these people from the East to read? Doesn't mean that he's taking a book or sheet of paper. He's just saying straight from the memory, you know, the, sen the verses of the poem. So he knew it by heart. My, and I've heard my translation into my language, in the, in the Vilna Polish uh, language, which was like heartbreaking, you know, which was much, per, much more perfect than I can say in Polish these words. So wh why I'm saying that, it was to say 
about the intimacy between Polish and Jewish culture for Sutzkeber and to understand what happened during the war, especially uh, during the war, of course, there were some signs and painful uh, signs from, uh, from the in-between war period. But for him, the Kielce pogrom, and for him, the way how Poles receive people who came back from the concentration camps and, and other situations to the cities like Łódź, like other cities. He was, you know, he was traveling across Poland, you know, to Lublin, to, uh, to Warsaw, to Krakow, to see this indifference and cruelty from the neighbors was something like, like a really deep break uh, 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 hard um, experience and the whole Sutpolin uh, poem is on that so something happened uh, and another component of this background is the broken bridge between this Paul this Christian and this Jew I'm trying to describe the situation and and then you you can understand uh, you know there is a very Touching haiku written by Polish contemporary poet Richard Krynicki, which says, Sutzkever died. In no Polish newspaper, a word of eulogy. Re regret or grief. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, would say, I'm translating from me memory. In 2010, <coughs> that sh showing, you know, that Suskever was absolutely not present in our culture, in our country, for many, many years. Suskever, a Yiddish poet, but a Polish poet, in a way. The, the part of Polish culture in that way, how Joshua Bassi, uh, or Itzhak Bashevich Singer understood Polish, you know, when he received Nobel Prize, a New York Times uh, journalist asked him what was the literature you grow up, and the answer was, of course, of course, Polish literature. What do you mean? Well, of course, me. Sholem Aleichem, Sholem Ash, Itzhak Peres, <laughs> Itzhak Manga. For him, it was Polish literature. <laughs> As, and I think we may also say, uh, 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 in the way we both, I, I hope, and I believe work with Mindaugas in our cities, that we, we do everything to, to make them back to what we understand Lithuanian culture or Polish culture is, in fact. But, but there was the time when the bridge was broken uh, uh, deeply. So again, I'm coming back to uh, to this situation in the train. Yes. Imagine there is a train, and somebody is slapping on your back, on Sutzkever's back. You remember this moment from Mashiach diary, when he feels that somebody is slapping his back and he don't have to turn to him because he knows who is doing it. Because the, slap, the way you slap him is a code, like you knock to the door and it immediately opens the door. You don't turn, you don't see him, but you understand that this hand comes from your twin brother, from the other which has access to your word, to your common word. And suddenly, from that moment, the word is opening fully for Sutzkever and both for Miłosz. What I mean, what I want to say is that without this other slapping on your back, the word is, is not open for both of them. The meeting should happen. The poor Jew should look uh, uh, the poor Jew and poor Christians sh should look to each other to come back to the openness, to, to the feeling of belonging to something what is common, what is, 
what, what was lost, of course, as a common thing, and what made, made us living you know, in district, in separate parts of the wholeness once existed. And in fact, all my questions, uh, I raised to both of them, yes, I have still five minutes, it's <laughs> quite a long time, uh, uh, is wh wh what is, you know, what, what we can do, yes? So after all of this, because this meeting is not about the, the Jew is saying his story, the Christian is saying his story, but the story is about looking at each other straight to the eyes and thinking about connective tissue reinvented, rebuilt in all uh, uh, the story because this is like a, uh, like a message for bridge builders and for, for the work for the borderlanders, the work we do uh, now, having them as patrons and the whole correspondence with Sutzkever, for example, is about uh, about the craft, you know, there is there is something in uh, in the war, uh, in the pre-war time. There was, you know, this famous dialogue between uh, Schmerke Kaczerwiński and uh, and Adam Sutzkeber. Why they, for the first moment, they didn't allow him to be a member of in the Vilna, yes? And Schmerke is telling him something that I. I, I understand as a very crucial thing is you I'm trying to persuade Sutzkever that the times were of pure steel, not crystal. Leuter Stoll und nicht Kristall. And so uh, what Schmerke Kaczyginski wanted to say to him is that he should be much more engaged in social political issues, the hard stuff, not about aesthetics, not about the nature and things like that. But for Sutzkever and both Miłosz, the whole thing was about crystal. The, whole, the bridge is like a crystal, which is a very precise craftsmanship on the field of mind. Uh, of minds, yes. Uh, another metaphor he is using in green uh, in green aquarium, yes. That we are stepping like on the minefield, you know. And each step should be done very carefully because otherwise you can destroy it. So that's how I found them, you know, to be very focused on small details, keeping at the ground, you know, be very pragmatic. My first discussion about Miłosz was, you know, I wanted to fly with discussion about poetry, about spiritual things, and everything what he was doing with me was come down to the ground. Think about how you make your living for many years in the future. The same was with Sutzkever, you know, come down to the details, to the craft, how you make a book. You know, he, the half, you know, long uh, letter I received for him was about, you know, using the paper, the craft, uh, craft of editorial stuff, and everything, you know. So they focus on 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 the daily life, you know, on, on the crumbs of daily life, and being very uh, very precise in what you are doing and how you are uh, doing. That's the only way you can cross to the other side of something what fulfills you and uh, of what opens to yourself. So to regain, not to not give up the Vilna, in fact, the fact for Sutzkever was, uh, and that's my understanding, living again in dead territories of post-Holocaust tragedy and making small steps one by one to connect between people, to regain the past truths and witnesses and uh, uh, everything, to rebuild bridges and slowly, because for, for him Vilna was of course, it was a utopian idealistic view of living, you know, of, of the wholeness, yes? And, and, and the, there, there are many question marks, you know, and we can have many doubts that Vilna was not an ideal city, in fact. But it was a pattern in that city which connected people. And, and the, the only thing we should do now is regain such 
city like Vilna in his mind, not to give up and not to live in the separate districts of our different truths, nationalities, memories, and cultures. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much, Christoph.